I am about to water my pot, but then before I do that, um, the the soil is a little um, hard now on top, so I try to like uh, hit it lightly just to loosen it up, so that water doesn't uh, flow off uh, when I water it. Um, this is chicken manure. Uh, this is the last um, part of soil that I put in here, as you can see. Um, it dries up and then it creates this crust on top. So every three times when I water um, this pot, I had to do something like this just to loosen up, break off the top crust so that it'll soak better. But as you can see, chicken manure, once they uh, dry up a little bit, it becomes all wood chips. Yeah, these are tough birds huh? who lay these kind of a uh, chicken manure. You know, hate to mess around with them. You know, you see them doing their business. Hey, what you looking at? Oh, not you, not you. Sorry, sir. Yeah, you know, you can totally get beat up by these tough birds. Yeah, so every three times or so, you're gonna need to um, poke it through, you know, loosen up the soil so that you can, uh, so that it can absorb the water. As opposed to let it uh, run off to the edge and just go straight down to the ground. Alright, it's about 5.30 uh, in the evening now. So this is a perfect time to uh, apply the fertilizer. So earlier I uh, put clothes into the soil to you know uh, loosen up the soil and uh, take away that crack on the on the top. So now I'm gonna use uh, fertilizer. Let's just show you. This is my five gallon um, uh, tub right here, and I'm gonna use liquid fish. So two ten ten is the rating. So the last two number being the large one. So these are more for uh, blooming. Uh, that's what I'm using for, and this is right out of um, a Fort Bragg, so it's Northern California here. Uh, it's about an hour and a half drive from where I am, so you know we'll support the Northern California folks. So, but before I even uh, use this, uh, I'm gonna wet the soil first to further allow water to drain into the soil as opposed to runoff. So here's my. Um, little faucet thing spray here so I just uh, wet it a little lightly not a lot just to wet the top layer so that um, so that water will not just um, run off to the edge right so just a little bit uh, like that I'm gonna do this for um, all my pots or so even right here this is a thunder dome right here so if you remember this dome is to protect my new branches from getting eaten by bugs yeah, I'm just gonna shoot a little bit in there. I figure uh, once I put the fertilizer, it's gonna soak under the ground so the roots will still reach it. So, so far so good. Nobody's eating anything right now. So I'm gonna keep doing this and you don't need to see me do it. Okay, so I just wet all the soil, so I'm gonna come back here. So even though it doesn't ask you to uh, shake it or anything, I'm gonna do it anyways. Like all fertilizer that I use, I always like to shake it first so that uh, the residue doesn't just uh, stay at the bottom. I like to give a good shake. Huh, look at that. Guarantee analysis. Hmm. No guarantee results, huh? Just analysis. Well, that sounds fishy, but I'm buying it. All right, so let me shake this thing real quick. Make sure I hang the camera right. So I do shake it like this. For those uh, people who does photography, you know what I'm doing. This is what they do for... Uh, uh, in the in the dark room, you shake it. Uh, the fixer, yeah. So basically, I learned this technique when I was taking photography class. So by shaking this, I'm rotating everything. All right, so that's pretty good. So here we go. Let me open this guy, and there you go. Here comes the fish. All right. So they say eat one tablespoon per gallon, right? So I'm just gonna eye it. I'm not gonna get the table and just get a spoon and just do it. So one tablespoon, two tablespoon, three, four. Oh, that looks like a big one, huh? And five. There you go. I mean, there's no like exact science, right? It also depends how, how much water you put in or into your pots and all. So I, I can always dilute it when I when it gets into the soil. So with that, now I'm gonna um, 
mix it with water like that's you know just following the instructions so I start with the spray first so I don't splash all over myself so now once that's all taking down like so there you go and now I'm gonna change the nozzle to my jet to really ooh I can smell that fish already so it's like the ocean ooh ooh wee yeah let me uh, oh yeah there you go so Oh, so I'd like to just uh, set it and forget it so I can walk away. There you go. And it is uh, just uh, mixing everything up. Ooh, see those bubbles? Those are fish bubbles. Yeah, you see these uh, when you go to the beach. Yeah, they're kind of that light tan color. And they're big, right? And cloudy. Ooh, gives me the eebie-jeebies. Yep. So I'm gonna let that keep filling and then I'm gonna apply about three to four scoops in each one of these pots. These are 20 gallon pots so there's a lot of soil underneath so I'm gonna yeah apply um, you know three to four scoops of it and I'll show you what size scoop I'm talking about. Oh man those bubbles are getting bigger so here's the scoop that I'm talking about it's not that big compared to the yeah it's probably less than maybe half a gallon or so yeah or maybe even less, one third of a gallon, but yeah, there's no uh, number on here. Yes, yeah, so I can't tell. But anyways, I use about um, three to four scoops of these um, of that liquid. Okay, here we go. So, see the bubbles? <laughs> they look yucky, huh? So I, I, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to smell like fish. So let me just, uh, yeah, do it like that first. Yeah, make sure the bubbles don't pop on me. All right, so here's uh, scoop number one. And I'll just start with this dome uh, unit first. All right, you guys ready for some seafood? Here it is. See, here's uh, scoop number one. So I just go around it. See, because the soil is loose and, um, and I also wet the soil. It's just soaked right in so fast, right? It doesn't like stay on top. You know, it doesn't create a pond or anything like that. So I gotta be careful when I'm uh, videotaping and um, and scooping. I don't want to drip it on my shoe. <laughs> oh yeah, I will never be able to go back to bed with that kind of smell in there. Yeah, remember this is very um, strong fishy smell. Yep, that's right. So I provide the forest and they provide the ocean. So we have ocean forest. <laughs> Eh, get it? I don't know. I don't know if you guys do because um, Fox Farms Ocean Forest is the soil brand that I use here. <laughs> so that's why I'm just saying that. Anyways, I'm just, uh, so that's three scoops. So here comes the fourth. Yeah, so I give it to the bigger plants more and less so for the these two new ones. These two new um, Sugar Dragon doesn't need as much. So these are my, uh, so I have a Vietnamese white right here. And then this is my um, Robles Red. Then uh, over here on this side is another Robles Red. So there, that should be enough. Four is enough for that. I don't need to fill it with a lot. Oh, whatever. I'm just gonna do a little bit more. One more, right? It doesn't seem like a lot because uh, right now it's growing season, so I could give it more. Yeah. All right, five, five scoops of these. All right, then I go into the next one. And um, now it depends on the plant that you, uh, on the size of the plant that you have. If you have all young baby plants, you don't need this much. You know, maybe just a little bit of uh, liquid is good enough. We're only talking about ones that will be uh, providing fruits, that will do fruit buds. You need to give more, right? So this one is uh, giving me fruit buds already. So I'm gonna give it a lot more. See, ooh, just soak right in. See, just to give you an idea. Where's my fruit butt? Oh, there's one over here somewhere. Where'd you go? Uh, they're trying to hide. Yeah, I thought I had a fruit butt somewhere here. Just show you. Oh, is it on this side? Oh, sorry, it's on the other plant. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm just gonna come back here and do one more before I cut the video because you don't need to me to you don't need to see my technique and um, doing this. Now watch out for this, right? Because you got all these plants hanging right in front of you. You don't want to poke your eye out and uh, or have the the spines, you know, scratch you, right? So you got to be gentle, crazy. Yeah, 
make sure safety first. You know, if you really want, you could wear a heart hat. I know, I know, going heart hat in a um, in a garden is not the thing, but you know, safety first, right? For those of you who are not accustomed to uh, watering uh, dragon fruit plants, yeah, be careful. You're gonna, otherwise, they're gonna go through a lot of uh, pain before you realize that hey, I gotta be careful. So there you go, I'm gonna do one more, but I'm not gonna, yeah, make you watch that. While I'm filling my second bath um, bucket, I'll show you the uh, butt that I was talking about. So it was on this plant, so there is another one, see? On May 9th, there's a flower bud right here. And then, uh, there was another one right here that's bigger, May 3rd. See, this one is, uh, these are, both of these are American Beauties. So I do have them, and so I just watered them here. So now they should have some fertilizer to help those buds grow and help. Hopefully, uh, more new buds will come out. See, once you see one bud come out, usually uh, they will come out um, in bunches uh, shortly. So that's why I'm uh, fertilizing them with uh, the fish fertilizer. All right. Well, I'm uh, filling up my dirt bucket just to give you a little update on uh, some of my other. Um, butts here. So this is my Haley's Comet. So you see all the butts are growing. So right now this is a good six inches now. So still got some long ways to go to get to uh, 11 inches. So some of the other butts are coming in. So right here now if you look at this date 5-3 both of these showed up at 5-3 but this guy is much larger than that guy. So that tells me that there's probably not enough nutrients going to this guy. So I'm just going to, you know what, and not waste time. I'm just going to take it out now. Yeah, so I'm going to divert it all into this guy. That's just, uh, you know, just a way of I, I like to do things. Um, you know, if it's not getting it, it's not going to grow. See, I mean, this one's like twice the size of the other one. So I didn't want to wait for the other one. I'm just going to let one get big real fast. I have plenty, that's why. I have like good... A dozen of them right now, so I have a lot of uh, these little buds. So that's why I was I'm able to throw away that one. Hopefully, you guys aren't like you know. Oh no, Charlie, you crazy? Yeah, well, sometimes I am pretty crazy, but that's my uh, thinking. Ooh, I better uh, change that. Um... Okay, once I finish applying the fish fertilizer, I like to give it one more soaking with the spray, like this. Yeah, this is the last final step. So I spray it before just to wet it so that um, the fertilizer doesn't run off um, to the side. And then this last one is just a good soaking to make sure the uh, fertilizer get absorbed into the bottom and not evaporate in the morning. So that's one. This doesn't take a lot. I'm just uh, fertil yeah, watering like this just to wash some of that fertilizer down into the soil, right? Yeah, because I don't want to apply it now and then there's some of the good nutrients that may evaporate tomorrow morning when the sun hits it. It'll dry up real fast. So this is just a quick uh, last spray, not a lot. I'm not really trying to soak the soil. This bottom of the soil is still kind of wet or moist. It's not like wet wet where it can damage the root. But this is what I do. Just uh, give it a good rinse to wash some of that uh, nutrition down a little bit. I guess it's kind of like eating a dinner and drinking some wine with it and just uh, to wash it down, right? Yeah, make sure the food go down good and all that. Yeah, so that's what I do. And this is how I um, apply my fertilizer. Okay, while I'm doing this uh, last uh, rinse here, I also wet these aerial roots. You see them? They have, these are the roots that's in the air. And I'll tell you why I do that. Because later on I'm going to spray some more fertilizer onto those roots. Yeah, because uh, I my uh, theory is that these roots are not just here to look pretty or cling on to anything. I think they are actually, you know, they can actually absorb moisture too. So I'm gonna wet them, so it's easier for the uh, fertilizers fertilizer later to stick onto them. Okay, while well, I'm filling out my uh, last bucket for my fig plants, yep, so I have uh, three fig plants. 
Look how green they are. Just said this is a bonus feature, right? Yeah, yeah I know this is a dragon fruit thing, but I'm growing uh, figs also. So I also use the same kind of fertilizer. But while I'm doing that, I'm getting my uh, my fertilizer ready for the um, aerial roots. So I use this uh, Floranova uh, unit. So I'm gonna combine it with uh, water and spray it onto the aerial roots. See, just to show you, this is from Santa Rosa, also Northern California. So I'm only giving business to Northern California, I guess, huh? So same thing, this one you gotta, in fact, this one tells you shake vigorously. So yeah, you gotta shake it uh, real good. So I'm just gonna shake it like so, vigorously. And then I'll mix it, um, instead of um, one tablespoon per one gallon, I'll probably make it a little bit lighter because uh, aerial roots may not need to have that strong of a fertilizer. All right. All right, now I'm gonna mix or make my uh, aerial root uh, spray formula. So there you go. Eh, I just give it a little bit more. So you're wondering how come I didn't use the uh, fish for, um, fertilizer for the aerial roots? Well, that's because I am kind of scared of playing with fish water on my fingers. By using the spray, you know, it's gonna get into my nails and everything. I don't think I can sleep at night knowing that uh, that smell is under my nails. And that's the main reason why I'm using this uh, Flora Nova mixed with water. So here we go. <sighs> Let's pick it up a little bit. All right, so there you go, like so. And then uh, when you're pouring these things out, you're always gonna get a little bit of liquid right there. So I just rinse it off like so. Yeah, rinse it right back into it. Yeah, I'm gonna fill it all up. If I have extras, I'm just gonna pour it into the uh, into the plant pot itself, right? I don't have to use all this water to spray because I'll be here all day and night just spraying. So there you go. I'm just standing away so it doesn't splash all over me, but it doesn't look like it's uh, splashing that much. Yeah, see? So the water uh, seems much cleaner than the uh, fish fertilizer. Yeah. And there you go, that's how I do that. Okay, then I just transfer that into a, a water bottle like this and see, I just use the scooper again. Of course I rinse off the scooper already so there's no more fish smell in there everywhere, right? So see, this way I can just fill it into the bottle. Oh, I've made too much. See, so the rest, I'm just going to use it for my other plants. See, this is a lot. And there you go. And this is my uh, spray that I do like so. And then I'm going to walk over here. Oh, let's find the one that has the most. Let me take this camera off here so as you can see, see? Just, uh, just spray it onto them like that. Oh, sorry, I didn't even know the cameras being blocked by one of the branches. Okay, there you go. See, I just spray them anywhere that has these uh, aerial roots. Yeah, see? They're not really gripping on to the um, wood if you look at it, right? They're kind of just uh, out in the air and stuff. So I know they're not, um, you know, like using it as arms to hold on tight so they don't fall off or anything. So I am assuming that they will absorb some of the moisture that's coming out here. And then that's what I like, what I'm thinking, that these uh, roots are basically uh, up in the air to absorb more, more moisture from the air. So why, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna be able to do that, then hey, here you go. And also the reason why I'm spraying them up here is that they're closer to the uh, place where the buds are growing. So if you're gonna grow fruit buds, I'm already up here. You don't have to go from the ground up. I'll go through the roots and then get all the way up here just to get the top, right? I meet them halfway up here already. See? Ooh. There's a hawk that's uh, just flying above me. Ah. Okay, I'm just gonna come over here where there's not, uh, not so much traffic here. So this one you can see. See? I just uh, spray the ones on top. Yeah, like so. Like that and then here. Oh, this is a good one to show. See, when they uh, when they have all these uh, roots sticking out like that, I'm just gonna spray it. See, I wet the roots already, so it's a little bit um, so it'll stick stick a little better. Yeah. So wherever they have roots, I'm not spraying all over the body of the plant because there's nothing going on there. But that's my um, 
theory at least. I don't know if it's proven that it will work, but my goal is try to meet the main reason why I'm doing all this is that I want to um, have them fruit buds. I want them to grow fruit buds right away. My season is very short, so I'm trying to find them, find all the ways I can to force them to start growing fruit buds as opposed to um, branch buds. See, so I'm spraying some of these uh, Flora Nova on here, so hopefully it will work. Alright, I'm finally done. It took a good hour, maybe hour 15 minutes to water the soil or fertilize the soil and also to sh uh, fertilize the aerial roots. So this is how I uh, do a complete fertilization job. So I do this about eh, once uh, every three weeks, maybe two weeks, yeah, every uh, third time I water. So in between this, I just uh, water and I also use the um, just a regular um, Flor Nova and not the fish. So I don't smell too bad. So when you see me, you know, hey Charlie, how's it going? You know, you're not going to smell anything on me.